Hello friends, welcome to the channel. In this tutorial, we'll transform your Spring Boot API's error response from generic to genuinely helpful. You'll learn to create custom specific exceptions and then build a centralized global exception handler using controller advice and exception handler. We'll show you how to craft structured meaningful error messages for issues like resource not found and importantly how to move your existing input validation error handling into this global system. This ensures consistent and clean error responses across all your controllers. Say goodbye to confusing default errors. So let's get started. In the previous tutorial, we built a Spring Boot REST API to manage products. We covered how to add a new product, update an existing one, and perform read operations like getting a product by its ID, fetching products by category, and searching by name. Here, this was our product controller. As you can see, this endpoint, this one, retrieves a product by its ID. The ID is passed as path variable in the URL. Inside this method, we are fetching the product using the ID. If the product is not found, we throw a runtime exception that returns product not found message. Let's open our database tool. This is our product TV schema and here is the product table. Right now, it only has one product, a laptop with ID of 4. Let's try to fetch in this product using our REST API. Open the postman. For getting the individual product by ID, the URL was localhost. Then our application is running on port 8080. Then API forward slash products. Then ID. Here, the ID of the product was 4 and if you send this request, here, could not send the request. Okay, I forgot to start the application. Let's start the project. Now, let's try again in Postman, sending this request again. Here, you can see, we get the product details as JSON response. Everything looks good. But what happens if we try to fetch a product that does not exist? Let's test it by requesting a product with ID 3, which is not in the database. If you send this request, here we are getting this error. Right now, we are getting a JSON response with a status code 500, which means internal server error. And in this JSON response, if you look at the response body, we have this information in the JSON object, like the status code. This is the error message. It just says internal server error. It doesn't very helpful, right? It doesn't tell us what actually went wrong. Let's check the console if you can see what is actually happening. I will make this a little bit larger so you can see it clearly. Here, we can see a runtime exception being thrown with the message product not found. So the backend is logging the correct message and this is coming from this runtime exception. From this runtime exception here in the console, we are getting the proper message what is happening here. But that message is not being sent to the actual API response. This creates a problem for clients or front-end developers without a clear error message. It's hard to understand what went wrong or show the user a helpful message. So what we're going to do is override this default Spring Boot response and provide a meaningful error message for situation like this so that the front-end or any client can understand the error easily. We learn how to do this in this tutorial. Let's go back to the IDE here minimize the console inside our base package i am going to create a new java class uh, sorry not a java class i am going to create a package let's name this package exception and inside this exception package i am going to create a new java class and let's name this resource then not found then 
exception. Now, what I am going to do is extend this resource not found exception class from runtime exception. And inside this class, I am going to generate a constructor. We need a constructor that accept message. This one, let's click OK. And that's pretty much everything we need to do for this resource not found exception class itself. But to properly handle this custom exception and control the API response when it's thrown, we need to add an exception handler. So inside this same exception package, I'm going to create another new Java class. Let's name this one custom exception handler. Inside this custom exception handler class, I am defining a public method. The return type will be response entity. Let's name the method handle resource not found exception. This method will accept our resource not found exception, the one we just defined as a parameter. Let's call it exception. And it also accepts another parameter of type web request. Let's call it request. Inside this method, what we are going to do is first create a payload which will be mapped containing the exception details and finally we are going to return this payload in a response entity so first let's define the payload it will be of type map the key will be string and the type of value we are going to store is object let's name this map errors and this equals new hash map here I think uh, we can change this variable name to body as it represents the response body. Now into this body map I am going to put the details of our error payload. First I am going to put a timestamp. So the current time new date. Make sure this date is imported from Java UTL package. Um, here I made a mistake. I use objects for the map value type it will be object we need to remove this as now for another attribute in our response body body dot put this will be our message here I am going to provide the actual error message we can get this from our exception object using exception dot get message and the final attribute I would like to provide its path the path where this exception occurred. For this, we need to use the request object, then get description. This method takes a boolean parameter indicating if we want to include client information. No, I don't want to include detailed client info, so I'll pass false. And there, that's our payload. Now, I'm going to return this. We can return this as response entity in the constructor for the body, we provide our body map and for the HTTP status, let's set it to HTTP status dot not found. So that's all for defining this handle resource not found exception method. So we are pretty much done with defining our exception handler method for this specific resource not found exception. Now we have to tell Spring that this method right here will be responsible for handling any resource not found exception that is thrown. We can do this by using the annotation exception handler directly above the method and the value for this annotation we pass the exception class itself. We can pass one or more exception classes if this handler is meant for multiple types but for now this method will only be responsible for resource not found exception. So we provide resource not found exception dot class basically when a resource not found exception which we just created is thrown anywhere in the application spring will catch it and that thrown exception object will be passed as an argument into this handler method then we'll have access to its details like the message and one more last thing we need to do for this custom exception handler class we need to tell Spring that this class will serve as a centralized place to handle multiple types of exceptions from across 
different controllers. To instruct Spring Boot to use this class as such a global exception handler, we need to add an annotation at the class level. That is controller advice. And here we go. Here, let's remove this unused import. So, our custom exception handler class is now ready to handle resource not found exception globally. Now, back to our product controller. Okay. Here, we are currently throwing a generic runtime exception when a product is not found. I am going to replace this with our new resource not found exception. And let's check for other occurrence where we are throwing runtime exception for similar not found scenarios and replace them as well. Let's search for runtime exception. Here is another one. Replace it. Now let's search for another and replace this as well again check if we have any okay that should cover it now let's start the project our project has started now back to the postman if we send the request again for the product that does not exist in the database like this like this product with id3 here we can see the structured response we defined we have a proper message product not found the path, the timestamp, and the status code is 404 not found, just as we configured in our custom exception handler. That's much better than the default 500 error. Now, I would like to address another exception. In our previous video on input validation, we defined an exception handler method named handle validation exceptions inside our product controller class. This method has triggered when the valid annotation on the request body product detected validation rule violations. Here in the product class, we have defined validation rules like not blank and minimum size for the name. So if the request that contains product as request body and if that violates this validation rule, then this handle validation exception will catch that and Throw the proper response. This handler would catch the method argument not found exception. The problem with that approach was that this handle validation exceptions method was tied only to the product controller. If we had another controller like the product details controller we have created and we wanted the same validation error handling, we needed to copy that same handler method into this product details controller as well. This leads to a lot of boilerplate code. Imagine in a real world enterprise application with dozens or even hundreds of controllers. You would have to duplicate this exception handling logic in every single one. That's a huge amount of work, error prone and a maintenance headache. So now we are going to solve this problem using our custom exception handler. Instead of defining this validation error handler in every controller, we will move it to our global handler. Now. From our product controller, I am going to cut this handle validation exception method and back to the custom exception handler class. After the handle resource not found exception method that we have defined earlier, I am pasting that handle validation exception method. Now we need to make a few adjustments to this method. First, we don't need this response status annotation on the method anymore because we will return a response entity which will define the status. Second, need to update the return type of this method. The return type will be response entity. And in the return statement, instead of just returning the error map, we need to wrap it in a new response entity, passing the errors map as the body and for the HTTP status, it is HTTP status dot bad request. And this method needs this annotation exception handler with value argument not valid exception to tell Spring it should handle this specific validation exception. Now let's start the project and test this globally handled validation. If we check this in Postman, let's open a new tab for creating a new product. This was a post request and the URL was localhost 8080 API forward slash products for the body let's send an invalid product for example provide only the description 
description let's say it is a great product but no name or category which are required i am sending the request and see in the response we have these errors name is required and category is required and we have the status code 400 bad request this came from our global handler now let's try sending an invalid request to the api for slash product details endpoint remember in our product details controller we accept product with valid annotation and from this class i am going to remove this exception handler as this will be handled globally now let's start the project and test this globally handled validation and send the same invalid request also let's try with a negative price let's say it's negative 500 here we're getting the same structured error response this time this response is also being handled by the single custom exception handler now we don't need to duplicate this validation error handling logic in every controller that's how we can minimize repetitive work reduce potential errors and make our code base cleaner so with our global exception handler now in place our api handles validation errors consistently and cleanly across all controllers this makes our application much more robust and easier to maintain but while our api is now great at handling bad data what about protecting the api itself how do we control who can access sensitive endpoints or who is allowed to create update or delete products that's where spring security becomes essential in our very next tutorial we are going to take a deep dive into securing our rest api we will implement powerful role based access control from scratch thanks for watching this tutorial I'll see you in the next one.